Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman, and our next guest up, Daniel Murphy uh, of Silent Reminder Entertainment Corporation. Great to have you on Radio Entrepreneurs. Thank you very much for having me. And I see you're sporting the the, the, the T-shirt today, Rebellious Entrepreneur. Um, yeah, I mean, I think every entrepreneur is a rebel in some way, shape or form. You're taking a risk that most people probably warned you against and uh, you proceed anyway. So you've got a really fascinating background. You started in some very conservative industries and, and now you've pivoted and, and you're in the entertainment industry. So uh, do share if you like. Tell us a little bit about your background and what led you to this point. So uh, my family is a banking family. And so I knew that was something I was going to pursue. Uh, it was something that interested me, uh, my dad being my idol, watching him and how he grew something out of nothing always, you know, really resonated with me. Uh, so as I, you know, left college, had the internships at Lehman Brothers, uh, and then I worked at uh, Societe Generale, which is now SG Cowan. Uh, I had the, yeah, the Wall Street experience, uh, September 11th occurred and decided to come back to Rhode Island, uh, and work and learn the family business. And then did that for about, you know, 20 years, you know, starting very, you know, low on the totem pole and then getting to the point where my brothers and I, uh, yeah, we, we co-owned and co-operated, uh, the bank. And, uh, after about a decade of that, I decided to, one of my passions, which is music, I uh, went and got my MBA and came back and decided to launch a record, uh, yeah, record label and a publishing company. Fabulous, and and uh, so some of the lessons learned along the way, and some of the things that you're that you're working on within your your own business, and and I should mention that you have an exciting event coming up. You've got a record launch coming up in the next uh, week or so. Uh, uh, yeah, Halloween, a couple of uh, weeks. Yeah, my artist Ty Cooper will be uh, dropping an album. One of the biggest uh, tracks that we've done as far as a collaboration we just did with Benny the Butcher uh, from the Griselda and uh, he's part of a record family called the uh, Black Soprano Family or BSF and Christina Mackey. She is a phenomenal artist out of Los Angeles and uh, we collaborated, came to Brooklyn, filmed the video as well as, I mean, shoot, we recorded in Worcester, Mass, shot a video in Brooklyn and then also in Providence, Rhode Island. So we just put that wow. together with uh, True Light Films. And uh, that should be coming out, like I said, in, in cooperation with the album. Uh, it's called This Part of My Life is Called. And uh, the tracks reflect uh, chapters in Ty Cooper's life. So it's a really uh, it's exciting project. We have another one coming out shortly thereafter. But this one's we're really excited about. So tell us a little about uh, the label. Are you in pursuit of, uh, I guess all labels are always in pursuit of artists, right? Um, you, know, the, you know, the music scene and, and looking to, to represent people. Um, tell me about that along with the publishing uh, you know, entity, et cetera, and yeah. how those pieces fit together and uh, where, where the emphasis for you is. And, and, and again, being an entrepreneur, how do you spread yourself around as much as you do? <laughs> Yeah. So for me, starting this business right at the basically as COVID hit, it was something where we were, as I'm looking at my vaccination card, uh, <laughs> it was something that caused us to really pause, pivot and think about not only our safety, but the safety of those around us. So I was not in, let's say, A&R mode. I was not looking to, you know, uh, sign a bunch of artists and then have us all be stuck in this this position, working directly with Ty uh is has been very gratifying watching his growth and, and and really again with this album that we're about to uh release i think the again the whole world's going to hear a very different sound uh and his maturity and that's something that uh to answer your question right now that has been my primary focus because you know the, again just like a, a any entity that you start you know it's kind of like your baby and so right now it's it we're getting to that that maturity you know what i'm saying and uh I'm really excited about what is about to happen because that is going to provide me the, I guess, the, the catalyst I need to then look at what are these other opportunities with other artists and the collaborations. And you don't have to have all these artists under your umbrella. But what I like to do is work with them and see whether or not their work ethic, uh, what are they saying? What are they really truly about? And is this music the only thing they want to do? Because when they have a lot of other passions, it can cause them to be distracted and not fully achieve their potential. And I want to make sure that I'm working with the people that really have that passion and that grit that they're going to be able to push forward. 
uh, during the times that are most difficult. So I found that in Ty Cooper. And, and to be honest, I haven't seen those same qualities in, in as many artists that I've been come, you know, in contact with. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Want us to fulfill what we set out to achieve, and then I'll be able to go forward and, and, and seek other opportunities with other artists. But right now, he has been my sole focus. I, I would imagine it's it's not dissimilar to the entrepreneurial journey, right? You got to make that commitment and stay the course. Um, a lot of distractions in life, a lot of other opportunities come your way, and how do you you know keep your your focus on the future, right? Because right. there's a life cycle associated with. Uh, what you're doing with Ty, obviously, from from you know writing uh, to to laying down the tracks and producing the you know post production, as you talked about video shoots, all of those things, um, and now now you're getting to the point of launch, and now it becomes you probably go into marketing mode uh, largely and promotion and that those pieces that have to happen, um, and it's it, you know not dissimilar to the evolution of of, of a business um, and being able to do that. So it's a it's a fascinating tie in. Um, what have you found to be some of the uh, um, you know significant challenges along the way in terms of you know um, when you represent an, an artist and trying to get that you know again they have a lot of distractions in their life and 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 it must be a very personal relationship right because you're 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 you know you're both confiding in one another probably a lot about your 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 personal challenges life challenges and at the same time trying to to you know get this off the ground so to speak. Yeah, Ty had lost his uh, his girlfriend about a year ago, and that was something that had caused us both to, uh, again, pause, reflect, and and since then, doing things like this most recent track uh, with Benny the Butcher and Christina Mackey, it's called Golden Globes, and he makes a reference to her in this track, and there's been times where we have certainly felt her presence doing the things that we've done, whether it's in the actual booth recording the song, or during the video shoot where we we really felt a, a tremendous energy and, 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 and a lot of things that we had planned, as, as you can imagine, Murphy's Law is something that I take very seriously. So I have <laughs> written a book. <laughs> I have a backup plan and then a backup plan to the backup plan. So when Great. things were not going to go the way we thought, uh, we had to very quickly pivot. And luckily, a friend of mine who owns a restaurant downtown, Cersei, uh, Carlo allowed us to come through and film there. Uh, and, you know, we were not disruptive to his business. Uh, you know, we weren't playing the music. So what we were doing is essentially just acting out a scene and that type of, you know, again, these friendships with people that have nothing to do with music. That's just a friend who, who is a restaurateur, right? He's an entrepreneur. And so when he saw we were working and, and, and I introduced him to Christina, who's dressed in this beautiful gown. How do you say no to her? <laughs> you know, mm. he, he can say no to me as a friend, but how do you say no to that? She is huh. ready to film this scene in your restaurant. So uh, I ordered- It's a classic food. entrepreneurial lesson though. Pull out all the stops, right? Whatever right. you got so, in your bag of tricks, pull it out. <laughs> right. So I, I ordered drinks and food for everyone in the staff, the videographers, you name it. And then we went across the street and filmed. Then we went to uh, a prospect park where it overlooks the city and filmed there. And then lastly, we went to the cemetery. And we got there prior to closing, but because we had such an entourage, they didn't want to let us in. Mm. Um, so we had to leave the cars at the gate and walk in, which was not the intended scene. The scene was going to be shot with him going in, in the vehicle and driving off. So again, you have to think about, okay, if we can't do that, then what can we do? And so thinking about things like that, it allows us to not only be creative, but in within that creative space, we're doing something that was unanticipated, but comes out even better than what was probably planned. And so that's mm. the type of lessons that I'm learning is that there's always the good intentions, but you know you have to execute. And if you can't execute your original plan, you should have a backup plan. And so my backup plan, as far as you know, music, is getting into the other elements of entertainment, which is you know whether it's you know production of uh, you know movies or shorts, uh, but really getting involved in all the aspects of entertainment, putting on large scale production uh, concerts. And I'm working with some people right now uh, for a show in April. Uh, and I'm talking about that because I'm collaborating with people that I've, I've never worked with before. And as you mentioned before, with the launch of an album, I'm gonna be working with marketing agencies to help promote and do what they do. So it gets played on the right playlists. And there's certain strategies that we can roll out now that I, I feel a lot more confident, not just in the music, but just where we're going uh, as far as a society. It feels safe to go out again. We can do the concerts. We can have these 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 you know gatherings where we've been really 
we were in a tough position for about two years. It was, is you know, it was really tough to launch an entertainment company and not have really the opportunity uh, opportunity to reap the rewards for all the hard work we were putting in, all the rehearsals. Are you are you finding um, that as the, you know, sort of cliche, as the world opens up again, and you know, in a lot of cases, that's been the case for you know, perhaps a year or so, that mm-hmm. people are um, eager and even more receptive to to you know, opportunities to showcase, to, to invite artists in, for venues to be busy, uh, for people to buy tickets and and drinks and all the things that go associated with that. Are are you finding an eagerness and or and, and perhaps a receptivity that maybe? Uh, you wouldn't have seen uh, pre-pandemic. Yeah, but if if you really take a close look at what's happening, whether if you're watching comedians who are being attacked on stage, you're seeing artists who are having water bottles thrown at their head while they're performing mm-hmm. for a very large scale crowd. Um, you have almost stampedes in what is reminiscent of Woodstock '99 happening at certain artist shows, whether it's Travis Scott or others, where you have the unfortunate incident, you know, at Astroworld. So what happens is you have a lot of pent up aggression. And unfortunately, even if you think about, (laughs) look at what's happening on airlines, people are not even civilized anymore. So when you have that mentality, it's very difficult when you put in, uh, whether it's substances, or the fact that people have just really lost some of their just minds decorum decorum yeah, and, and, yeah and, they just and, and don't, decency yeah yeah they don't have the etiquette and and so the mob mentality of whether it's throwing objects at an uh, you know an artist that no that, that has to stop you know I, I, that mm. has to stop because people's safety is in jeopardy and if we haven't learned from our past we're definitely going to be bound to repeat it and so we have to have higher security we need to protect the artists and protect the fans so it goes both ways it's a double-edged sword the fans need to behave and the artists can't be uh, exciting a riot because the matter it is is that we don't need that <laughs> yeah no it's it, it, it's amazing you know the adage do unto others as you like done to you has sort of gone out the window right it's like yeah. every man for woman for themselves um and uh so i could see how that would be a challenge and you know uh, something that perhaps uh in a live setting artist didn't have to historically think about and now they've got to be conscious of it and and you as 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 sort of the the, the guy behind it all has to think about those things and and prepare for it. And frankly, there are you know, additional expenses that you probably didn't have historically for those types of things. So, and that's, yeah, that's what I'm learning. As I said, I'm getting into some large scale events and, you know, some of them that don't necessarily involve Thai. And, and, and the reason I'm doing this is, is to not just get the experience, but also to be that voice in the room that does say, had you, had you thought about this? Did you, did you really think that that's enough security? I think we should add maybe another 40 to maybe 50%. And that's going to be an expense, but the profits will, again, the profits were going to be there. The expense does not justify the risk. Mm-hmm. So you can, yeah. you can beef up security. You can protect the artist and you can protect the fans. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting, you know, world, interesting dynamic, uh, so to speak. Um, you know, we wish you uh, great success with the launch of the drop of the album and, and uh, all your, your endeavors and would love to hear more about uh, the various types of things that you've got going on. Uh, if people want to reach out to you, Dan, what's the best way for them to reach out to you, talk about what you're doing, perhaps uh, collaborate on something. What, what's the best way for them to reach out to talk to you? Uh, yeah, you can direct message me, uh, you know, uh, Instagram, silent underscore reminder underscore entertainment. Uh, same goes for, you know, Facebook. Again, as far as social media, I re- I do respond quickly. Um, or Daniel at silent reminder entertainment dot com. You can reach me, email me. Uh, I'm definitely interested in collaborating because, like I said, I work with videographers from House PBD to now True Light Films. And the more that we collaborate, the more we enjoy, you know, again, it's that creative process. So I enjoy collaborating, not just with local artists, but again, I'm working with people all over. Josh Connolly, Studio A in Las Vegas, where we, again, we want to be in the places where we know we're going to have the, you know, the best engineers, the best, you know, producers. So that's what we do. We're definitely flexible. We travel. So whether it's East Coast, West Coast, and then soon to be global. Fabulous. Well, we wish you continued success on your on your journey. And, uh, you know, the the pivot is fascinating to me going from, you know, a traditional, uh, you know, a conservative environment to one that must be really exciting and, and full of energy and uh, just, uh, you know, tons of creativity. It, it must be a real joy. So we wish you continued success Thanks. and uh, look forward to hearing all about it on a future segment of Radio Entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for having me. Our guest has been Daniel Murphy, CEO of Silent Reminder Entertainment. 
And we'll be right back with another segment on Radio Entrepreneurs.